We're still playing a bit slow. So as I was saying, so wow, so th that's going to be amplifying every frost by two now, isn't it? My goodness. Move one. Just just in case they had something for that. My goodness, did you see that interaction? What? Necrat now. Come on, golden boy, carry us. You can do it. That gets locked now. Okay. Go. Oh. Man, I gotta give it. This card worked pretty nice there for us now. Not bad. Okay, okay. Are you cold, human insect? It won't be. Hey, what's up, legends? Welcome back to another deck guide. Before we get into today's list, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please take the time to do so now. My next objective is to reach 10,000 subscribers, and I'd really appreciate your help and support in achieving that goal. For today, I've put together a Devotion Frost list, utilizing the White Frost Leader. The order allows you to move an enemy unit to the other row, spawn Frost on its row for two turns, charge two, Keep in mind, whenever we play a wild hunt unit, boost it by one if there's frost in the opposite row. So placement of your units is something you'll have to keep in mind. For the most part with this leader, I like to reserve it to be used either long round three if we get taken that way, but it can be really good on the bleed round two to use in combination with the foglets, for example, and our other cards. I've gone with the tactical advantage stratagem because dominance is a bit of an aspect in our deck. I mean, you could change it for something else if you like, but as you see here, we've got the Wild Hunt Hound, we've got a Wild Hunt Warrior, and also the Wild Hunt Riders need dominance. So I just went for the ability to boost a unit up so we can have the tallest unit on the field. Okay, so that's what this is doing. Boost an allied unit by five. As far as what you'd like to place that stratagem onto, you could put it onto the Wild Hunt Hound, um, Nugglefar's crew, or just your tallest unit so you can help get dominance. What I'm going to do is run you through this list bottom up, explain how best to play each card, when to play it during a match, and then we're going to discuss how to execute the strategy for the deck. So as you can see, we've got kind of an assortment of different bronze wild hunt cards at the bottom of this list. Usually I wouldn't play it this way, but the reason it looks like this is because of the new location card but i'll get into that in a second we'll just start from the bottom here to begin with so we've got one wild hunt hound dominance at the end of your turn boosts off by one so this card needs to be the highest powered unit on the field or we just need the highest powers highest powered unit on the field at that time when we're going to play this so that its ability will continue to work i like to play this card as an opener into round one and give it stratagem usually Wild Hunt Warrior, deploy damage an enemy unit by two. Dominance, also spawn Frost for one turn on that unit's row. Because of this card, the way it works with spawning Frost, that will have some synergy with the new card, the Anel Aristocrat. It will have synergy with Nugglefar's crew passive ability and Foglets. What I'd say is we try to reserve Wild Hunt Warrior then to be played with those cards in round two, or you could use it for a bit of control in some cases round one as well if you like now moving on to the new cards i've got one copy of each of the new bronzes the nl aristocrat from testing this card out i really like it i feel it's a nice addition to frost decks 
So order on dominance, we get to move an enemy unit to the other row. So with the order, that can help us spread the opponent's units across both rows. So they do consistent, so consistent damage gets dealt from frost. And the really good thing about this card is that at the end of your turn, spawn frost for one turn on each enemy row to which frost was applied this turn. So we like to use the Anel Aristocrat as a proactive play into either round two or three. And then after we play that, you can play Foglet, use Leader, and then you get the idea. It's going to start amplifying all Frost we play. And then this can help Foglet get a greater boost as well. Uh, I have one Nugglefast Taskmaster. <coughs> Pardon me. The deploy allows you to purify an enemy unit. If we have the highest powered unit, we get to purify a unit instead. If one of our units receives a status, we could use this to get rid of it. Or you could target opponent's defender units, resilience units. So with this card, you're going to search for it as you need it. Depending on the matchups you find yourself in. One con Conqueror. I like to save the Conqueror for a short round three uh, scenario. If we take the match that way. Or just play it at the end of the match. Because it's going to give us a bit of a point slam then when we need some points in that case. So it's a Veiled Unit. On Deploy, it would destroy itself. But we're a Devotion deck, so we get to cancel the Deploy ability. Double Nugglefast Crew. Deploy spawn Frost for two turns on an enemy row. At the end of your turn, if there is Frost on the Ops row, boost off by one. Save Nugglefast Crew to synergize with the Foglets when you play them at that time, round two or three. One NL Slave Trader. Um, with this card, deploy gain vitality equal to the total duration of frost on the opponent's side of the battlefield. Infuse an enemy unit with at the end of your turn if there is an enemy of this card with higher power than your own. Set own power to one, then lock yourself. So one thing to keep in mind with this card is that we want to target lower powered units than this with it so we can get that effect played out. Preferably units at four strength. But if you have ways to boost this up, it can play for pretty big value. Sometimes I like to use the location, um, play the location down, the deploy boost of location onto this, and then we can get a really good reset lock value from this ability. An L Slave Trader could be played round one in combination with Ardgaith or round two. Wouldn't be good in a short round three. Double Wild Hunt Riders. This is to give our deck... Um, the ability to generate some tempo gives it consistency because we thin out from the deck. And because we're thinning, we want to play this as early on as possible in the match. I like to play this round one to get a few points on the board. So on deploy, dominance, we need the highest powered unit for this to work. Summon all copies of this unit from your deck to this row. So what we do is one card we play down on the board. The other one has to be in deck at all times. Then we've got two Wild Hunt Bruisers. The Bruisers offer us more movement and some control. Deploy, move an enemy unit to the other row. If the target moves to a row affected by Frost, damage it by two. Try to reserve the Wild Hunt Bruisers to be used to give Caranthia, um, this Caranthia, Golden Child, more value because it will get better value the more units that are damaged from Frost on both rows. So that's what we want to do a Bruiser try to maximize the value out of this card in particular i guess you could use one round one and then save the the other for later on best save the best save both for round two or three though really double h and foglet has a lot of synergy with frost veiled unit so i can't gain any status which is good can't get locked deploy boost self by the total duration of row effects on the opposite side whenever you apply a row effect boost self by its duration i like to play both h and foglets proactively early on into a round usually round two on the bleed and then once you have them down then you can start doing your frost synergies playing eridan our bronze frost creating cards leader all that kind of stuff we've got phantom as an engine it's a veiled unit can't get a status either zeal order ability you can use the order right away when you play this card damage an enemy unit by three at the end of your turn if order is not used boosts off by one phantoms a nice card to help us get round control good way to open up proactive into round one or you could use it round two on the bleed 
as far as the order goes for this basically you want to greet it you want to greet the order all the way until the end of the round that you're committing to get that maximum boosting going then we've got Corinthia golden child at the start of your turn while in hand or deck reset own power and boost self by the damage dealt by frost in the last five enemy turns what we want to do to maximize the value of this card is in the base case scenario we have units spread across ranged and melee row that belong to the opponent and we're consistently dealing damage on both rows and then these values will be higher at that time best case scenario is that we're playing eridan as well and then these figures will go really tall and we want to time the play of Corinthia golden child because what happens is let's say we get all of these figures up like four two six whatever comes up here if we continue playing into the round and we didn't just damage a unit with frost we start to lose these values so the idea is that you're consistently doing frost damage throughout the round and then when you've got no more frost damage abilities left you have to consider playing this okay so keep that in mind Caranthia golden child is a card you're going to use round two on the bleed it would seem to work good then or round three only if you went in a long round three where you're doing a lot of frost um, damage then we got gales play because we're devotion just look at this part play a wild hunt card from your deck instead instead of a special so it's a bit of a tutor card we can play anything you like really you could save gales to get you auberon king um the new location maybe ardgaith just go for your your gold cards um free to play it around one if you want for some control we've got toad prince the deploy is melee roadlock consume a unit with four or less power you can use that round one or two probably a bit more safer winter queen at the end of your turn if there's frost on both enemy rows summon this unit from your deck to your ranged row devotion once both players have passed boost off by two for each turn of frost remaining on the opponent's side a card that has good synergy with winter queen is this card here because it's it keeps amplifying amount of frost generated so you might want to have this down if you're going to consider playing out winter queen and basically what we want to do with winter queen is just keep this in our deck at all times because we want it for the thinning value it gives us i like to kind of thin this out around one through ardgaith and then speaking of ardgaith it's an echo card we get to play it twice spawn frost on both enemy rows for three turns you can use this round one for tempo thinning with winter queen and then round two to push hard on the bleed or a long round three depends where you took the match try to wait to play this until your opponent has units on both rows then we got wrath damage an enemy unit by the power of your highest power unit if it was on a row with frost destroy it instead which is quite good so that was the change that was made to this card um this is basically one of our tall punish options in this deck try to save it for round two or three we've got a lot of ways to make that play consistently in a in a frost leader deck then we've got noggle fire it's a tutor card gives us consistency to make sure we get our golds look at two random gold cards from your deck play one place the other on top noggle fire usually is best played around two because you're a bit more certain of what you're likely to look at and play maybe even round three you could just play it to pull you one gold you might have missed then we got eridan deploy spawn frost on an enemy row for two turns dominance increase damage dealt by frost by one so this is what can help make Caranthia golden child play even better i like to use eridan on the bleed round two and you're going to play this after having both foglets down okay oberon king we're a devotion deck so we transform through these stages in the final stage round three we get Auburn conqueror he's a veiled unit deploy spawn and play a bronze wild hunt unit from your starting deck so we get to select that exactly what we want whenever you play a wild hunt unit boosted by one because of the passive ability of this card we probably want to use this card as an opener into the round that we're going to play it into okay so we can save Auburn conqueror for a short round three to give us a bit of a point slam or just save it at the end of the match um generally speaking we don't want to play this round two at this point and we can use Auburn conqueror sometimes it's not bad to use that to get an nl aristocrat 
because we can generate a lot of frost and that can give us a lot of great value make Karanthia even better or sometimes you might just want to go with a point slam like Anil Conqueror but I think something that can give us frost synergy would probably be the best option like Nogglefast Crew or Wild Hunt Warrior even and then finally we got the new location Tinalia, I think it's pronounced it's a res it's got resilience so if you don't play the order initially on the round that you play this card on carries over into the next round deploy boost an allied unit by x amount increase the value by the number of unique bronze wild hunt cards in your starting deck so the boost for us will be i believe one two three four five six seven eight it's going to be a nine point boost that we get on deploy this card keep that in mind now as for the order spawn frost on your opponent's belly and range rows equal to the amount lost on the last round transition then spawn and play red riders okay so with this card i think it's okay to play this round one because it gives us a bit of points and we like to bleed with our deck into round two so we could we could float the order to be used in round two to synergize with the foglets okay because we're going to spawn red riders and then we can create more frost at that time and that could work with eridan and our other units so keep that in mind that's how we want to play this i think now that I've covered the list, let me explain our execute strategy for this deck. What I think we should do with this list is pretty much go for the bleed, push hard into round two, maybe try to 2-0, or drag the match into a short round three. If you're versing a deck that's not control heavy, long round three with all these frost synergies might not be so bad either, okay? So considering that, round one cards for you to play out could be... We have the Wild Hunt Hound. You have, for passive points, the Phantom to play early on into round one. Get those points accumulating. We can also consider playing something like the Aristocrat, Wild Hunt Warrior. Basically our bronzes that you see here. Wild Hunt Riders, Slave Trader, Nogglefast Crew. Save Conqueror for a short round three. You can also play Toad Prince. You could play Location. And Ardgaith. Should be enough to get you round control. If we get round control, bleed into round two. And you could proactively play the Aristocrat if you didn't already, followed by both Foglets. Once you have both Foglets down on the board, then start utilizing your Frost synergies because of how these cards work, right? So once they're both down, then you can start using your Leader. You can play Eridan. Anything that you have that generates Frost, we want to play in round two. Exhaust your Leader in round two. Push really hard with the Foglets. And the damage of Frost. I think Karanthia Golden Child probably makes most sense to play in round two. Um, if we're going to bleed the opponent. Because we'll be doing a lot of Frost synergy at that time. So also find a good point to play this card. When it when this card's values are at their highest. And 2-0 the opponent if you can. Throw everything at them. If not, what I suggest for a short round three. Is that we fall back on Auburn King to give us a conqueror we play the other conqueror play whatever else you have left in your deck you've even got wrath to consider at some point so take some kind of a line of play like that hope you enjoy the following matches and thanks for your time and support supposed to gain devotion requirement oh that's how they're gonna stop the um frost abuse <laughs> That, I, I like that. What do you think about it, Baron? I think that's, that's smart. So it's going to be like devotion um, for the order? Like devotion what? How would they word it? Uh, or to use the order, it's devotion? Maybe opponent doesn't have um, good cards. Just for the order, right? Better as a bleeding card? Okay, thank you for the advice, Yoga. Really appreciate it because it's my first time um, playing these new cards. I'm still trying to get my head around it, so thanks.
Thanks for helping me become a better player, my friends. Appreciate you. That was kind of my um, thoughts too. It makes sense that... You know when you bleed with Frost, you kind of want to use all your Frost in round 2 especially. Frost is awkward in a short round. So I was thinking myself, maybe round 2 is the way to go with it. But you know, I'm still a bit unsure because it's new to me, the card. Like how it works and everything. Five strong turns of Frost. Like Eridan, with Eridan, right? Three points of damage. That's probably best, huh? Three points, three points. Thanks for follow. Okay, right. Round three finisher. Okay. So either you use it on a long round at the end of the round three or um, on the bleed, right? Short round's a bit not good. The update's pretty good. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. So this will be going back there. Can I, can I do something to target that on my side? Damage an enemy unit? I can't really. Okay. Shielded? That's kind of crap. They have the dominance. We need dominance for this one. Are you cold, human insect? It will be long now. There we go, like this. Just to stay ahead on points. Because it looks like their hand's a bit sus. And then now we can go this, you see? I pretty much just play that now for the sake of this. But this round one doesn't feel so bad because we want to bleed, right? And then we can use Red Riders, Foglets, Eridan. I think it feels nice round one, not bad. Gives you a few points. We've got nine here. Wow, we got leader out. Good. Oh. Yeah, well, like, 21 points is a bit of a gap, man. We may lose this. We didn't get to thin yet. Well, we got leader out. I think that's quite big. We can save Wrath and Movement to deal with Kar here. I'm quite sure I'm going to see Kar here in this kind of a deck. So we save the bruises to deal with that. May try to bleed me. I have no idea. Sup, Aquito? Foglet could help. Yeah. But just their numbers get crazy. <laughs> I was playing this deck yesterday. We just thin now. I'm not. I don't think we have to be worried about it. What are they gonna do? Stop playing Death Wish on me? <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't think so, man. So we lose this one. But we got leader out. Now we're looking for Ardgaith, Foglets, Wrath. Pretty much. I 
I don't know if this is going to be good for me in this matchup. So we're going to have Golden Boy as a final say on this one, like at the very end, I guess. Oh, what are we using this one for? Spawn and play a bronze water, aren't you for a starter deck? I have lived long, seen all, and I am bored with it. Let's just go like this. What is this peasant wine? Fetch the cup bearer. And if they don't answer this, that will contribute this way. And it will work very good for the golden one, I think. We still played a bit slow. So as I was saying, so wow, so th that's going to be amplifying every frost by two now, isn't it? My goodness. Move one. Just, just in case they had something for that. My goodness, did you see that interaction? What? here as as okay so, so which are these trigger now it's gonna be getting more frost right Only the <laughs> All else oh crap i like it okay hey zeros what's up multi eridan Yeah, I've been hearing about it now. Uh, we have movement with these units now? Wait, what's our... Oh, so we have like Wrath. Maybe we should hold the Wrath. Maybe that's smart. In case they have something that goes like super tall late. So we just keep amplifying now. Take dominance while we have it, probably. No Get rid of that. Oh my goodness. This is crazy, man. Are you serious, bro? Yo, even, even these can answer this. Oh my god, I love it. So cool. That feels so good. Four, six, two. We just go for more. We've caught another taskmaster. Wow. This is kind of how I felt when I was coming in frost matchups when I was playing their kind of deck. It's a bit hard with the control, like movement and stuff. Yeah, so we're gonna go Nugglefire into Wrath and remove whatever they're gonna go super tall with. Ah, so they get to reset our Foglet. Yeah. Crap, that sucks a bit. Do we kill that now? Or is something gonna go taller? Can something go taller? Something may still go taller than that. this world as we have conquered countless others mm. 
There we go. Right. I can't. I can't play until until that's out of the picture. Uh, they kind of have an answer. And then we'll use Bruiser to move a unit. But I, I really like these cars. They felt good, man. I like that. The movement they gave us. They're just waiting on it. <laughs> nah, they have the answer. Crap. I can't really avoid it. Unfortunately, I can't really avoid it. Well, now that they gave a big boost here, not so bad. I don't know. Because they're going to waste that here. And then this stays at 20 then. Bilger forts. Mistake stars reflected in the table. Oh! <laughs> yes! Yes! Oh, crap. Let's have a look. Let's hope it isn't, man. <laughs> Tough to play, Gwent. Siana Yerden. Oh, I think it's it again. It is, it is. Oh my god. Yeah, it is. So, what do they do? They just... They don't care, they just spam frost. They don't care if it hits you or not. Thanks for the follow. <laughs> Straight up. I don't think it was intended that frost was going to get played like this. This is supposed to be for monsters devotion. Wow, they, they just don't care, like, four on leader and everything. Do I even have a chance in, in this kind of a matter? I really don't know. Like, what are my chances? GG, did we just play each other? Thanks so much, my friend. Yeah, I can't really do much against your deck. <laughs> and now versus someone else playing that too. Uh, it's incredibly cracked. Pretty much wasting time. Wow. They're fully trained for discretion. I don't know, I just feel like I'm playing cards at this point for the sake of it. <laughs> In this match, we can't really do anything, hey. But like, that then that affects my me getting to pro rank. Because if I forfeit, like, we just, I'm going down. 
So what, I can't I can't climb to pro with this deck? I gotta go a deck that runs Heatwave just because of this. Seriously. Oh man. They have the dominance over me. <laughs> Quadruple tall punish. <laughs> Maybe you're right. It's not my style. You are what you repeatedly do. That's just not what I'm like. I like to see things through. I don't really care. And you never know as well what can happen. Still. That's it. <laughs> yeah, this deck again. Okay. Let me focus a bit. Dominance out of the question. Thank you very much for the cheer dub. Appreciate it. Yodin's gonna be insanely good. Yeah, Yodin will be good. Maybe my knight's deck could be good against this one. If you add Yodin to it. So we want an even again. We're just slowly playing. Let's see what happens, man. Do you like the meta? Like right now? It's going to take a bit of time to settle in. But I've been seeing a, a diversity of things. I like that. That's cool. I just don't know about this deck that I'm versing. It feels like it's disproportionate to everything else. Because it's kind of like you can abuse something on it. Um, yes, there's, there's like a feature you can abuse on it. You know how you can keep replaying? That location, I feel that's a bit detrimental to some style of decks. Like, I don't have Heatwave, I'm Devotion, I can't deal with this. I can eat that. Like, look at this. I just hope maybe they don't have the cards they need now or something, and we could 2-0. Oh crap. Magic is a curse of blessing and progress. Um I'm gonna start doing it. I guess so. If they're hoping on one big foglet, we got access to Wrath, do we? I think maybe we could get Wrath still? Like that into it? Or just from Nugglefire itself? <laughs> Yo, you know this isn't intended to be played this way because you, it's even getting hard to see the numbers here <laughs> oh my god yeah what the hell let's do it <laughs> no way. 
Uh, so they're expecting to slam Foglet at the end of this, and then we're gonna go Wrath and kill it, I think. I play everything out to the end. What do we do it now? <clears throat> Maybe now. That's it, come on, forfeit. You shall not deny me my next rank. You're joking, man. Are you serious? Maybe that's how we defeat him with our deck. We're gonna like screw up the sequence badly. I could still use that with that. We'll go search for this one. Didn't get it. Thanks for the follow. Ah, man. Yeah. Wow. Alright, uh, Miss Golden Boy. If they have any kind of way to play a Foglet or something, Navigator, I don't know. Okay, so in hand, one of the cards is Navigator. And then the other two, we don't really know what they are. Hit. Use this. That's what you mean? How can I help? <laughs> so spawn frost on your opponent's mother is 64. I don't get that. 64? Is that an error? That's confusing to me. Um, do we replay the navigator? Okay, right. It's showing me their carryover. 
Wow, it's, it's confusing, man. There's a bug. All right. Okay, thank you. Yes! Get some, man! Yo, someone asked, why don't I just forfeit? There's my answer. That's why. Now you know why. <laughs> Straight up, man. Uh, I love the feeling when we can defeat those kinds of broken lists. It's the best. It's one of the main reasons I play Gwent. <laughs> As a Gwent player, it's what I live for. <laughs> no doubt, man. Hard. You come around to, to that, maybe. Thanks for the follow. Dirty nine. Need to work towards getting some dominance. Maybe they got a Necker at Meliro. And then we can hit Ard Gaith, and then the four will. Or right, even that. Oh, it would be nice if it stayed alive. I can't really do much there. Or can we go location, boost it? Maybe that's... A fool's blessing. Now we'll go out gaith. more frost now right wow i like this card okay my feedback on this i like it man the fact we can do that has so many synergies and it's got movement i'm just not entirely sold on the other one that's why i just went for one it's early days still though i'm just playing this the first time today Wow, Oriana? Okay. Really? We have movement that way too. We can use this, replay it. Oh, what do we want to spawn this? Back row? So this makes this a big threat now. They might have something to kill it. Yeah. Okay, that's good for them. They have dominance. Damage by two. 
We've got Oriana out, Fletter, this. We're doing two... Four points of damage. Nah, probably shouldn't push it. The Frost was looking nice, but... The, the Queen died. Kind of rather save it for later. Maybe we could have. I kind of like to save it for round two or three. We'll see, my friend. Uh, what do we prefer to look for? Yeah, we want the golds, right? We want like one, two, something like that. We need that now for thinning. Oh. Oh, jeez. A pleasure to bleed you. Crap. Uh, we do like the bruises. I think. Maybe it's just this. Death comes for you. Ah. It would have been nice to keep the foglet. Uh, can I do like Auburn with the riders? I could do that for a play. That's pretty big. We put the riders back. Yeah, catch around, Dub. Thanks for your time. <sighs> okay, we got this one now in this match. Yeah, let's... I think we can do it, right? No. <laughs> oh, I got screwed. Crap. I got screwed on my draws. I didn't get to thin then on the round two. Crap. Wait, it should be this one first? I think so. <laughs> Magic's frozen. To the planning board. That's going to get super tall anyway. Can I kill that? We're going to use Bruiser there now. Yeah, it's Batiste. Go ahead, feel it. Are you serious? Well, you want to destroy a bleeding unit? Go for it. <laughs> if you really want, man. You went for that? Thank you. 
Not correct now. Come on, golden boy, carry us. You can do it. I get locked now. Okay, go. Oh. Man, I gotta give it. This card worked pretty nice there for us now. Not bad, okay, okay. Are you cold, human insect? Man, Eridan. Cleaning up. Forget about Regis Reborn, dude. We coming. Wow. Proto? So we're saving that last. Is that how I play it? Yo, if we win this... Wow, he really carried for us. The golden boy too, at, at a really big strength. Giving him the boost. No way. That was my best play, man. I must think of my Crap. Oh. Oh, it was really good until then.